Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas on this Sunday, August 30th, worshiping by remote video. We are very glad you have tuned in today to praise God together. Next week, we will be meeting in person together out on the lawn at 10 o'clock on Sunday, September 6th. I hope you will be able to attend and uh, invite anyone else that might be interested in celebrating and praising God together. For today, I thank all of you who have contributed a recording for today's worship service, and I thank all of you who have turned in to praise God. May we celebrate God's grace among us. Let us turn our hearts to the worship of God. Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We come together from our separate places to gather in the presence of God, united by Jesus Christ. We come to worship and to praise God. So I invite you, even from a distance, to sing along in celebration of God's grace as we sing the next hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet song by flame Praise his name, I'm fixed upon it. The name of God's redeeming love. Hitherto thy love has blessed me. Thou hast drawn me to this place. And I know thy hand will lead me safely home.
As we gather in worship, we confess our sins and we ask God for forgiveness and guidance. We know who we are in God's presence and we feel God's redemption and grace. So let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of blessing, God of grace, we offer our hearts and we thank you for taking whatever we give and making it holy. We know that we wander, that we are distracted by other concerns. We know that we fail to be all that you have called and created us to be. We pray, forgive us, and heal us again by your mercy. Make us whole and make us yours. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God does redeem us. God gives us grace. God offers us life and possibility. So go and rejoice in God's grace. Good morning. I'm going to read a story that's called For Heaven's Sake, and it's about a little boy named Isaiah who loved blueberries. And, you know, it turned out that he loved blueberries, blueberries a little too much. He ate them until his mouth turned purple. He really, really loved blueberries. So his parents said, Isaiah, you're going to have a lot of trouble with, with these blueberries. For heaven's sake, Isaiah, hence the title of the book, For heaven's, heaven's Sake, Isaiah. And his mother said, you ate all the blueberries. I was going to bake a pie. And, and his aunt warned, Isaiah, if you eat any more blueberries, you'll get sick. 
Has your mother ever said that to you? I remember saying that to my children sometimes. You better not any more of that. Isaiah said, for heaven's sake, people said to, to Isaiah, for heaven's sake to Isaiah a lot. So Isaiah wanted to know what heaven was and where he could find it. And that's a good question. Where is heaven? Do we know? We don't. We think we know. People have different ideas. So he asked his dad, what's heaven? Isaiah asked his father it melt, as milk chocolate was melting for his favorite dessert. Uh, heaven is the taste of rich fudge brownies. Isaiah, as dad said with a smile. So I, I don't know if that's really true. Is it really rich fudge brownies? He said, where can you at find heaven? He asked his uncle. And they're outside and they're looking up in the sky and there's an airplane. Um, uncle said, above the clouds where God lives, his uncle declared. Isaiah's uncle was very sure of himself, but Isaiah wasn't so certain. He had traveled in an airplane that flew beyond the clouds, and all he had seen was just sky. So then he asked the lady who delivered the mail. Heaven is a place where you don't have to work, carry anything, where you can sit around all day and rest. That didn't sound like heaven to, to Isaiah. It sounded boring. He didn't want to have to sit around all day and do nothing. And the male lady thought that would be a great thing to do because I'm sure she was tired from walking all over with a male. Isaiah asked his big sister what she thought. And she said, I'm not sure there is a heaven. Don't even waste your time thinking about it. So she told him, I don't know what to tell you. But Isaiah could think of nothing else. So everyone talked about heaven. Thank heavens, heaven forbid, for heaven's sake, Isaiah. But no one could tell Isaiah what and where heaven was. A few months earlier, when Isaiah's grandfather died, his mother told him that grandpa went to heaven to be with God. Isaiah had asked what heaven was and why grandpa couldn't be with him. But his mom was so, was so sad to, to answer. So Isaiah decided to ask once more, mom, what's heaven? I just don't know. Isaiah, why don't you ask grandma? So grandma's gonna ask a lot of interesting questions. So he went to his grandmother's house and he said, I am looking for heaven. So his grandma said, that's a very good thing to do. Would you like to go with me and we can look for it together? So the next morning they went to the um, soup kitchen where Isaiah's grandfather and grandmother had served breakfast once a week for a long time and his grandmother went in. So they went inside and I can turn this page. There was Mr. Fenwick, Isaiah's soccer coach, coach making hot pancakes with thick maple syrup, just like his grandparents did. The tables were dressed in old, the people at the tables were dressed in old clothes and threw smiles, but they were all pleased to see grandma and to eat Mr. Fenwick's pancakes. Isaiah wanted to stay and taste the warm maple syrup. Come on, Isaiah, urged his grandmother. It's time to go to the library. He was having a good time with his grandmother. Mrs. Katz, the librarian, was sitting on a large rocking chair, reading stories to children whose eyes were as wide as Mr. Fenwick, Mr. Fenwick's pancakes, and Isaiah had loved to go with his grandfather to the library. Grandma Isaiah whispered, I thought we were looking for heaven. This is the library, Shh, said Grandma. Let's listen to the stories for a while. Isaiah did love the stories. Some made him feel all warm inside like a hot mug of cocoa. Others, like the fizz on his favorite cherry soda, made him laugh out loud. Isaiah wanted to stay and listen to more of Mrs. Katz's stories, but soon his grandma whispered, hurry Isaiah, we're going to visit Mr. Ling. Isaiah's choir teacher, Mr. Ling, was conducting a chorus. Grandpa had often taken choir, Isaiah to choir practice at Mr. Ling's, but Isaiah had never thought to look for heaven there. Still, the music was beautiful. There were songs that made him relax, like being in a warm bubble bath. Others, like his favorite roller coaster ride, that made him want to shout for joy. After a while, Grandma put her hand on his Isaiah's shoulder and said, Isaiah, she said to herself softly, softly, it's time.
have to go home. When Isaiah and his grandmother arrived home, Grandma prepared two big bowls of blueberries with sweet whipped cream. They both ate until their mouths turned purple. Well, Isaiah asked his grandmother, did you find heaven? Isaiah loved his grandmother very much, but he had to tell the truth. Grandma, I jo enjoyed the places we went today, but I did not find heaven. I found Mr. Fenwick, Mrs. Katz, and Mr. Ling, but they were not in heaven. Heaven is often in places we are le least likely to look. When I, <clears throat> when I want to find heaven, I look in here, Grandma said, holding her hands to her chest. Isaiah placed his hands over his heart, just like Grandma. You see, they're putting their hands on their chest, and then they're right where their heart is. Grandma smiled until her two large dimples floated either side of her cheeks. I think, Isaiah, that we can get close to heaven and to God in places in our house. I feel there is a part of Grandpa in all the places we visited and the people we visited today, and it was a little bit of heaven too. Isaiah paused. Perhaps he thought Mr. Fenwick, Mrs. Katz, and Mr. Ling have heaven in them. Isaiah gave his grandmother a big blueberry kiss right on one of her dimples. I know, Grandma. I think Grandpa is in heaven, and his heaven is also in you. For heaven's sake, Isaiah's smile, grandma smiled. Heaven is in you too. And you know what? Heaven is in all of you every day. Thank you. Out of the ruins and rubble out of the smoke, out of our night of struggle, can we see a ray of hope? One pale thin ray reaching for the day. But we can build a city of men. We may not reach the ending, but we can start. Slowly but truly mending, brick by brick, heart by
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Good morning. Today's reading is Psalm 63, 1 through 8. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. The Word of God. Uh, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger for thirst and righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
there is an emptiness in our world. And this is not a new thing. This is not COVID related or this century only or an American original. This is true of humanity from the beginning of time. We are incomplete alone. We yearn for others. We need God. We seek something greater than ourselves. It's in our nature to want more than ourselves and more than this moment in time. My soul thirsts for God. Our hearts ache to belong. And it has always been so, from the beginning of time, from the Garden of Eden, through the exile, to the resurrection, there have always been psalmists and prophets and wise magi seeking God. When we recognize our desire and turn to the source, then we find God and we are filled. But all too often, people don't recognize what it is they are needing. So we try to fill the emptiness with something that is not enough. Wealth or power or popularity or worse yet, drugs or alcohol or sex or violence or any number of easy, empty forms of gratification that only leads to despair and desperation. You see it in the world, perhaps we see it everywhere. Perhaps you even feel it yourself sometimes. This beatitude reminds us that we have the source to satisfy our needs right within ourselves, right at our reach, even in the breath we breathe. Even our own hearts and our minds. God is with us now and always, ever ready to answer our call and our need, providing everything that we could ever need, and in abundance. We need only to receive. God gives freely and abundantly. What we receive is righteousness, which is a hard word to define. Righteousness is a right relationship with God, which sets us right in the world and makes everything in our lives right, as it should be, so that we do what is right for others and we know what is right for ourselves. That is righteousness. Now, it's not as simple as following a set of rules to prove yourself righteous. Only God can set us right. Only God can put us on the right path in our journey. Righteousness is doing the right thing because you cannot do anything else, because you have a good and right relationship with God, so you always want to follow God's will. Righteousness is doing good, not just on the surface, but, and not only in behavior, but being good to the core of your being because you belong to God. We are blessed when we want goodness, when we desire God's will as deeply as we need life and breath itself. We are blessed when we hunger and thirst for righteousness and for God, for goodness, when we recognize that we need God even just to live. The blessing is that we receive what we are seeking just by seeking it. Ask and you shall receive. We receive the full grace of God, the complete relationship with God, the belonging to God, the unending love of God. We receive it simply by seeking it. God gives it, and that is grace, undeserved and overflowing. God comes to us. God loves us. God is with us any time we want it. Any time we look for God, any time we look for God, God is here. 
The second half of the Beatitude has been variously translated, they shall be satisfied or they shall be filled. And both of those are true, but the translations uh, imply two slightly different blessings. To be satisfied means that your need is satiated, that you, what you desire is received. Bread for hunger, water for thirst. So if you desire God, you receive God. If you desire goodness and right living, then you achieve that goodness. You become as good and as holy and as Christ-centered as you desire to be. The Beatitude doesn't say that's going to be easy to choose to do the right thing, to live the way God wants you to, to love others as Jesus loves. It doesn't say it's going to be easy. But if you want it, if you truly desire it as one who hungers and thirsts, then you will receive it. Then you will be able to live and love the way God calls you to love and live. You will be good and you will do good in the world. You will live rightly with others. Now maybe you're thinking, well, I'm not there yet. I'm not that good. I'm, I make mistakes. I don't always do what God wants me to do. I don't always follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you're not thinking it, but I am. The passionate desire to do God's will is sometimes overpowered by our own limitations and failures, our sin to fall short of the glory of God. This beatitude is not intended to whop you over the head for when you fail to be as righteous and as good as you want to be, to punish you or make you feel bad for sin, or worse yet, to make us give up and say we will never be good enough. That's not the intent of this beatitude. Remember, righteousness and right living is not about our own willpower or our own faithfulness. Righteousness is about God and God's faithfulness. All about God and God's faithfulness. It is not up to us to be proud of our own goodness or to achieve our own rightness. It is God who makes us able to do the right thing, to live the right way. It is God who transforms us and makes us whole. So no, we may not yet be all that God is calling us to be. But this beatitude promises as, as long as you, as you long for it, God will give it to you. As you desire to serve God, God will give you opportunity. As you need to love, God will open doors and show you where to share God's love in the world. And you will be blessed. And you will be satisfied. And if you don't know what to do, if you don't know how to be a better person, how to live a life that is more whole and holy, this beatitude spells it out. Seek God first. Trust God. Turn to God. Yearn for God. And being in God's presence. Ask God for a better relationship. Ask God for more guidance, more goodness. Ask God. Let yourself hunger for God and thirst to do God's will. And you will be satisfied. The second translation of the verse, you will be filled, implies another level of meaning. Not only will your desires be met, but your emptiness will be filled. 
Your soul will be filled by the power of our living God, by the grace of our loving God. We read in Acts chapter 2 that the Holy Spirit came to the church and each disciple was filled with that Holy Spirit. And we believe that the Holy Spirit comes to each of us and fills us. God's Spirit enters all who believe, all who seek God. And God's Spirit gives us gifts in abundance. We are filled to overflowing with the grace and the love of God. We, we have God's love within us and so much love that it overflows into the world around us. We must love others because God has first loved us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Then that righteousness must overflow into the world. The next four Beatitudes talk about that overflowing love of God. Since we are filled with the Spirit of God, we will live in the world as those who are merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, steadfast in our faithfulness. Since we are filled with the Spirit of God, we will live God's love in everything that we do. Since we are filled with the Spirit of God, we will go out into the world and shine the light of Jesus Christ in everything that we do, every word we speak, every decision we make will overflow with God's grace. Because we hunger and thirst for God and God's holiness, because we desire God's grace more than words can express, because we yearn for this kind of wholeness in our lives and in our world, because we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God, we will trust God and follow Jesus Christ into service and compassion in the world. Wherever God leads us, we will go and we will be blessed. Amen. So let us continue in our worship as we share our faith again uh, using the ancient words from the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to stand and share what you believe. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. But the great day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the great and the dead. erupted into scenes of chaos in the US New Orleans clearing out Overseas. Bourbon Street Italy's death toll soaring America's deadliest day yet 17 million Americans died in Paris died from COVID-19 almost 11,000 down
Enough, always enough, always enough. You sing over me a song so sweet and calm, yet a furious roar claims me as your own. You're strong when I am weak. You pick me up when I fall. Your love is enough. Always enough, always enough. Yeah, you call my name. Yeah, your love erased my shame, and your death that took my place. Your love is enough. Always enough, always enough. Yeah. I will choose to love you, even when it hurts to. Emotion's not a catalyst. I will find the feelings as a product of my needling for the things that you have called me to. Let hope come and rise up, for I will fix my eyes on you. All things new, yeah. Your love is never ending. It's faithful, unrelenting. You're drawing us close to you, yeah. Your love is enough, always enough, always enough for us. Your love is enough, always enough, always. Enough, always enough for us. Your love's enough, always enough, always enough. Yeah, yeah. Always enough, always enough, always enough. Let's join together in the prayers of the people for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. Lord God, as we navigate strong headwinds and seek to see you through our fatigue and our fears, we confess that you are truly the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the one who stills the storm and immediately reaches out your hand to keep us from drowning. We rest for a moment in the joy of your presence, no longer afraid, free from anxiety, assured that you do not leave us alone, but seek us out when we are most in need of your peace. We know, Lord of all, that none of our thoughts and hopes, our doubts or our worries are off limits to your care and compassion. We know you, our teacher and our friend, you welcome us as we are and hear whatever is on our hearts and minds. We ask you to hear our prayers for those in our midst, most battered by the storms of our time. Grab the hands of those about to go under the waves of poverty or financial crisis. We ask for your intervention on behalf of families unable to provide basic needs for their children. Our siblings wrestling with food insecurity those on the cusp of eviction 
and the unemployed facing the end of benefits. As we see those about to be swamped by the waves of this pandemic move us to act in ways that lift others out of the roiling sea. Reach out and give courage and strength to people in leadership positions. Grant them wisdom to make decisions in the best interests of the most vulnerable. Inspire communities to use their power and resources, their will and gifts to support the people on the margins. Those for whom this difficult season has been catastrophic. We pray for teachers, administrators, parents and students as they all seek to navigate a new school year rife with uncertainty and unprecedented challenges. We are mindful of essential workers who are facing the danger of this public health crisis every single day. Protect and sustain them, Lord. We lift up the sick and all who suffer. Give them hope. Bring relief. Surround them with your mercy. Quiet the dangerous winds of discord and division and stir up the breath of the Holy Spirit to heal and unite us. Help us to build up the body, strengthen our witness, and reveal to the world that we follow the one who commands us to love one another. May others look at your church and see your hands and feet at work in the world, feeding and tending, forgiving and repairing, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with our God. In this moment, Lord God, we rest in your presence, certain that you are our Savior and the Savior of the world, able to do abundantly more than we can ever hope or imagine, never far from us, always reaching out your hand to save us when we fear the wind and waves of life will overtake us. We worship and praise you as we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. 
now and evermore. Amen.